Okay, so quick recap. Right, topic A is essentially about being able to respond to the environment. Okay, we said that in um, mammals, animals, right, we have a nervous system. Okay, and that nervous system is essentially allowing us to make responses to the environment because we have um, sensors that pass on information as impulses along sensory neurons. Sensory neurons take the information to the central nervous system where there's processing going on and then it moves, the impulses are then generated in the effector neurons which stimulate the effector to make a response. Okay, that's all great, and um, along this story we have discussed the idea that the nervous system itself is functioning because of neurons, that the way the information passes along these neurons is impulses, and you know, impulses along the neuron we need to understand resting potential, we need to understand synapses because that's essentially the mechanism of the nervous system. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, resting potential, synapses, action potential. So all that is right there. We also looked at an example of such uh, a mechanism and for us that's the pupil reflex. But, you know, the, another different example can be given to you. In that case, don't worry about the pupil reflex, then start thinking about the basic reflex response. Okay, so in, in terms of the pupil reflex, then we also looked in a little bit more detail at specifically what the sensor is, specifically what, um, how the sensor works, i.e. the eye in generating action potential, in the sensory neuron, in that case, it's the optic nerve. Then we looked particularly at the central nervous system that receives information from the optic nerve, and we looked at visual development and the critical period. Okay, and you know, again, understand that basically here we just got action potentials, down effector neurons they are going to release the neurotransmitter and cause the effector to behave in a different way, usually cause muscle contraction. Um, that's essentially topic seven. So the effector neuron, don't forget that the effector neuron is going to release a neurotransmitter and that neurotransmitter is going to cause, in this case, is going to cause the radial or circular muscles to contract, okay? muscle contraction, so all those events. So we're thinking about uh, neurotransmitter binding to receptors, causing the effector cells or the muscle cells to depolarize. In that case, they're gonna release the calcium into the cytoplasm, causing the uh, tropomyosin to move, causing the binding sites to be exposed to allow the actin and myosin to interact and cause the uh, fibers to uh, move over each other okay so this is all part of that story <clears throat> so that's that's fine as it is there and then then we did look at kind of offshoot of the central nervous system being the brain its regions what, what the overall structure is what the function of the different parts of the brain are and how brain function could be affected when the synapses in the brain don't work properly because of abnormal neurotransmitter levels. So you can see, uh, you know, it's a bit untidy, but the point being that the, all these things are related to each other and the thing that connects them is this idea of the nervous system. One last thing is, well, and then I think with the brain disorders, we looked at personalized medicine. I'm not gonna go over that right now, I think, Personalized medicine is not difficult to understand. You might fail to understand why, what it has got to do with what we've been doing here. 
But again, remember in Excel, it's rarely about the context of what you're doing. It's more about understanding. The context is just there to allow you to make a link. The content is what you need to concentrate on. So understand how personalized medicine can be done. You know, why genetic modification, how genetic modification can be used to better, to make better treatments. That's important. Okay. Then finally, you know, the thing that we haven't looked at yet, <clears throat> and which is the last thing that I'm going to do, is this, the idea that plants can also make responses, but they don't have a nervous system. They do it via hormones and via phytochromes. Okay, so plants can also make responses. Um, they are more basic but they can respond nonetheless, and that's what we'll do next to just finish this off. Remember, the, this video was less to kind of explain the nitty-gritty details of the topic, and more to reassure you that each individual component makes uh, sense in this larger story. And sometimes I feel that even though people do understand uh, the individual things, Sometimes thinking of it all together um, doesn't make sense and so it makes you feel like you don't really understand it. And maybe that this, is be, this has been the thing that has made you not understand the individual bits because you think that overall it doesn't make sense. Okay, so I hope that this um, shows you that it does all link together and that it does kind of make sense and once you have that reassurance, hopefully the individual things will stop making more sense to you. Um, so now, the next thing and final thing that we'll look at is plants and how they make responses. 